I'm Dr. Lauren Gerson, an Associate Professor of Medicine and Gastroenterology at Stanford University School of Medicine. I've been asked by the uh, journal Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology to present my study entitled Long-Term Outcomes After Double Balloon Enteroscopy in Patients with Obscure GI Bleeding. My colleagues for this study were from the University of Chicago and included Dr. Carol Semrad, Dr. Andrew Ross, Melissa Batnick, and Sharice Newsom. Double balloon enteroscopy allows the endoscopist to explore the small bowel using a 200 centimeter enteroscope and a 140 centimeter overtube. Both are equipped with balloons, and by serially inflating and deflating the balloons, the endoscopist can advance the scope far into the small bowel. Previously published studies between 2004 and 2008 have suggested that the diagnostic and therapeutic success associated with this procedure ranges approximately 55 to 75 percent. However, long-term outcomes after double balloon procedures have been, have been mainly lacking. Therefore, the aims of the study were to determine long-term outcomes after double balloon enteroscopy in patients who presented initially with obscure GI bleeding. We obtained IRB approval at both institutions and enrolled patients who had undergone a double balloon examination between August 2004 and November 2006. We required approximately eight, six months since the initial double balloon examination. We conducted telephone interviews for all patients and asked patients whether they had experienced overt bleeding since the examination, whether they were still taking iron therapy, whether they had received transfusions, or whether they underwent any further testing after the double balloon examination. Unfortunately, we were unable to obtain follow-up laboratory data for patients or document changes in transfusional requirements. We invited 274 patients and had 101 patients complete the study at 12 months and another 85 patients complete the follow-up study at 30 months. The range for the final assessment was 18 to 47 months. We performed approximately 177 double balloon examinations. The mean distance was 240 centimeters in the oral approach and 238 centimeters in the retrograde approach. There was a statistically higher rate of patients who had AVMs found on the oral approach compared to the retrograde and there were a higher number of patients undergoing a retrograde examination who had a failed exam where the ileum was unable to be intubated more than 20 centimeters. For all other types of findings, the findings were essentially equivalent between the two approaches. At 12 months, uh, approximately 43% of the cohort had no recurrence of bleeding. 24% did rec report overt bleeding, which was either new or recurrent. And 35% did report use of transfusions or iron therapy. Seven patients or 3% died from, another ca from causes unrelated to GI bleeding. At 30 months, the percentage of patients who had no bleeding increased to 59%. 24% still had overt bleeding, and approximately 18% had transfusions or iron therapy. In addition, seven patients or 3% died, again, of unrelated causes. The groups that were most common in both these assessments were patients with AVMs and patients who had normal examinations to the depth of insertion. And in both these groups, the re-bleeding rates were higher uh, at both time points. However, the rate of re-bleeding uh, was less at 30 months, mainly because there were many patients who went to surgery for other findings, which included neoplastic and ulcerative disorders. In addition, there were patients who underwent other examinations uh, including radiographic examinations and repeat endoscopies where AVMs were found. However, in the majority of cases when patients underwent other examinations, uh, the findings were normal. In summary, we found that approximately 43% of patients had no further bleeding at 12 months and 59% at 30 months. Limitations of our data included low rates of total enteroscopy, mainly because patients were referred to us and often did not come back for a repeat examination. We also had no information regarding usage of warfarin, aspirin, or Plavix, and whether these agents were stopped after the double balloon or continued. As mentioned, the highest rate of re-bleeding was in patients with AVMs or patients who had normal examinations. And part of the reason that patients may have had cessation of bleeding may have included false positive rates uh, findings on capsule endoscopy or the fact that many times AVMs will stop uh, without any intervention. It's also possible that, that ulcerations and other lesions may have healed. In summary, we found that approximately a third of our cohort did show recurrent bleeding at 12 and 30 months, and the patients with AVMs deserve further study to try to determine which of these patients are at higher risk of re-bleeding and what are the factors associated with re-bleeding. In the set of, setting of recurrent bleeding, options include 
uh, repeat capsule examination, double balloon examination via the opposite approach, or, or a radiographic study including a CT enterography or an angiography. Thanks very much for your attention.